Desk here in the TMC newsroom, and I'm talking today with Alan Percy from Audio Codes. Alan, uh, good to see you again. Good. Great, great to be here. So we've, we've talked uh, in some detail about uh, Audio Codes, uh, Enterprise Session Border Controller line, how you've expanded it um, to really now uh, provide a continuous pro contiguous product set really f uh, from smaller to larger enterprises. Um, what are you seeing in terms of uptake or deployment? Yeah, so good question. So the, um, uh, a couple things have started to happen. We've um, obviously been working with some of our early adopters and some of our case study customers. And, and uh, one of the specific early ones that um, were pretty exciting was uh, a contact center. Uh, it's sort of a, a work at home service provider called Working Solutions. Uh, and Working Solutions uh, is 100% work at home agent. So they have no actual contact center infrastructure within a building, they, you know, sort of no bricks and mortar type environment. Uh, and they had a challenge where uh, they wanted to be able to move some of their business over from TDM trunking over to SIP trunking. Uh, but one of the unique things that they need to be able to do is they offer uh, contact center as a service, sort of a hosted environment. They needed to be able to use G729 voice coder uh, to be able to compress multiple conversations and deliver them into remote work centers for uh, some of their service customers. So what they had to do is find an enterprise session border controller that could do the transcoding for them from the, uh, from the SIP trunking service provider to G729 and be able to then deliver it uh, to the remote customer. At the same time, too, uh, they wanted to be able to find uh, a device that could do both TDM and SIP trunking so they can make choices. Right? It's a very important contact center. A lot of their, their cost side of the contact center is, is based on you know, their, their cost of telephony, right? the, the, the trunking. So they needed to um, uh, have some flexibility to move some of their business either to TDM trunking or SIP trunking. So what we did is we helped them out with um, a pair of our immediate 3000 uh, enterprise session border controllers. Uh, they installed them uh, in, in on the trunk side of their, of their Genesis contact center. Uh, and then what we're able to do then is um, support not only you know, the TDM trunks that they've been using, but also to some SIP trunks um, from some national carriers and be able to do the transcoding on the fly to allow their, you know, the remote uh, um, agents to be able to use G729 to squeeze those conversations out to the remote agent. So really cool deployment, really, uh, uh, really interesting uh, adaptation of, of the enterprise session border controller. So a couple of things stand out there, um, particularly the fact that it's all remote agents. So right. does that change the deployment at all? Uh, it does. And one of the... Um, uh, one of the tricks, of course, with having remote agents is, um, is being able to reliably deliver high-quality voice to the agent. And that's been quite difficult until recently, um, partially because of um, the bandwidth requirements and also um, requirements uh, for those remote agents is, you know, they, they, have, they have to have a certain grade of, of broadband to be able to effectively be an agent. So they have to be very sensitive to the amount of data that's delivered out to the remote agents, especially these work centers. Uh, you know, if you've got 100 agents and you're using G729, um, that's much, much less voice traffic than if you're using G711 uh, because you multiply times 100 for all those voice paths. So it's kind of interesting that the dynamic, dynamic's different than if you were to do it inside your own premise or your own building or you have your own LAN that, that you could put the traffic on. And the other thing that, uh, that comes to mind is, is the ability to handle both uh, TDM and SIP trunks. Um, it seems to me something that would really pique the interest of uh, you know potential customers not being restricted to one or the other. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's the flexibility issue, right? That um, uh, it's tempting to say, well, I'll, I'll use whatever equipment the service provider gives me, but then you become locked to that service provider. And uh, we've almost universally, with our contact center uh, customers, seen that they want that flexibility. They you know they need to be able to move the traffic to different service providers based on market conditions, um, you know, they're very, very sensitive to, you know, to the cost of, of communications. Absolutely. Any other exciting uh, uh, case study type uh, yeah. uh, customers that you can talk so we've, about? So um, we have, of course, we've been working with Skype pretty heavily. Um, you know, Skype and the Skype Connect service is something um, that's been, uh, um, you know, we've been rolling it out over the last few months and talking about uh, customer deployments with Skype. Uh, and one of the areas that um, we've had some good success with with Skype is, um, is using our enterprise session border controllers to interface between Skype Connect and customers either existing TDM or IP PBXs. More recently, one of the customer projects that popped up is with the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation where what, what they've um, uh, noticed from their telecommunication bills 
is, is you know, all these remote employees calling in, the cost of the international cell phones, the roaming, et cetera, has been quite expensive. So that we're able to integrate, uh, we using one of our enterprise session border controllers, integrate in uh, the Skype Connect service into the customer's uh, CS1000, uh, you know, Avaya Blue, you, you know, um, P PBX platform, and allow then those remote employees to then uh, not, instead of using their cell phones to dial in, they're able to use either Skype clients or local access numbers and dramatically reduce the cost of their uh, uh, calling in and out uh, of, of the business. Uh, and again, the Enterprise Session Border Controller provides the interoperability between Skype Connect and the CS1000 uh, and also, too, um, you know, provides the security necessary to protect that, that CS1000 platform. So when you're talking about uh, providing the, the interoperability features and the security features, does your enterprise session border controller then have, uh, you know, have the ability to potentially boost the presence of Skype in the business market? Oh, absolutely. In fact, um, we, we've been working very closely with, um, with Skype and, and the Skype Connect uh, service offering uh, to I expand the kinds of devices that, that can be integrated into Skype. Uh, you know, initially the thought was as well, you know, th they'll deliver standard SIP into a handful of PBXs. Those PBXs have to be current version. There's only a small number that are, have been certified uh, by working with audio codes, and we're immediately able to dramatically expand, um, you know, legacy TDM PBXs, older IP PBX platforms, uh, and, and speed up the interoperability testing, plus provide additional security. You know, again, uh, you know, the big, one of the big roles the Enterprise Session Border Controller does is that it, it manages the traffic that comes in and can uh, isolate some of the you know, some of the potential attacks and do like topology hiding and other tricks like that to protect you know, the application uh, from from an external attack. Now, regarding uh, both of these two customers that we've talked about, are this, do you think that they're representative of the kinds of customers that you're seeing deploying enterprise SBCs? Yeah, I do. I, I think it's um, it, the, they're sort of early indicators of the kinds of projects. Um, I, I think you know as businesses start to move towards the SIP trunking environment more and more, they're, they're going to be looking for either a way to upgrade their existing equipment and to, to slowly step over. You know, the, I, you know, I think the rip and replace concept of all well, you know completely upgrade the entire system to. Um, while I think some of the large you know, equipment providers would love to have their customers spend a quarter or half a million dollars to completely upgrade, a lot of businesses are still being very careful with, with their financial investments uh, to, to take it one step at a time. And, and, and using our gateways and our enterprise session border controllers gives them an opportunity to move to SIP trunking to, or to, um, to services like Skype Connect to reduce their operating costs while they plan out those other financial investments, maybe in upgrading their, you know, their, their communication environment, you know, maybe to another platform like Microsoft Link or IBM same time or whatever it might be. Excellent. Uh, and so in general, um, what kind of uh, sort of uh, increase in, in up, uptake of enterprise session border controllers would you expect to see over the next you know, six to 12 months? Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of interesting because I, 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 we've started to see people buying gateways knowing that they can upgrade the gateway to an enterprise session border controller. So it's kind of, it's hard to put a finger exactly on what, you know, the actual uptake figures are, uh, but it's very clear to us that it's now as part of people's strategic thinking, uh, you know, they're, they're concerned about how are they going to make the, the transition. They're buying the right equipment that can be upgraded uh, or has the functionality right out of the chute. Uh, and we're seeing good, strong growth um, because of that. Well, that's certainly great news. I've uh, been talking here with Alan Percy in the TMC newsroom. We've been talking about uh, the enterprise session border controllers and some deployment cases that uh, Alan and the folks over at Audio Codes have been seeing lately. Alan, uh, it's great talking to you as always, and I look forward to sharing more of these uh, interesting case studies great. with you. Look forward to it. Thanks, Thanks. Eric.